okay it's good to have you you're welcome welcome so about the foundation people just this innocent amazing Mickey foundation is an international non-governmental organization formed to honor the legacy of the late honorable justice innocent as a bk who at the time of his death was an acclaimed professor of land and property law who authored over 25 books and served as the chief judge of enigo state clinching the longest serving chief judge in southern nigeria so the foundation delivers its mission through the promotion of excellence legal education research and charity initiatives. Some of our facilities and programs include the law library, the legal research center, annual lectures, workshops and seminars, educational grants and funding. Now the head GIUF smooth mock and debate boot camp. So today I as I read this, I really want us to note it because it is our expectation, it is the end goal at the end of this bootcamp for each and every one of us beyond participating in head GIUF competitions. If this is something I would appreciate if you can just have it at not not at the back of your mind, at the center of your mind and run with it as a law student and into your legal career as a legal practitioner. So the Honorable Justice Innocent Umezuke Foundation inaugural Moot Mock and Debate Bootcamp is an intensive program designed to cultivate the next generation of advocates and orators. And I'm sure that you're part of this generation. This bootcamp serves as a beacon of opportunity and learning, aiming to foster critical thinking, articulate expression and persuasive communication skills among students from diverse academic backgrounds. Throughout this journey facilitated by seasoned mentors and experts in the field, you would find a unique platform to not only enhance your skills, but also to forge connections with like-minded peers who share a passion for debate and advocacy. So the head GIF Mutmok and Debate Bootcamp signifies more than just a training program. It represents a commitment to excellence and a dedication to empowering the youth with the tools and techniques necessary to excel in the art of persuasion and communication as you embark on this transformative journey envision yourself not only as a proficient debater but also an articulate voice capable of shaping dialogues and effecting change in your community so approach each session with an open mind this is the last one actively participate in discussions and embrace the interactive learning experience this collaborative journey of discovery and growth holds immense potential for each of you. So once again, I welcome every one of us to the final day of the HJIUF Moot Mock and Debate Bootcamp, where the seeds of advocacy and oratory are sown for a brighter future. So just welcome yourselves. You are special. It's so good to have you here. And you're in you've been in for a very insightful learning experience welcome yourself it's not easy to invest in yourself by being a part of this training all right so this for the second session in this final day of the boot camp our facilitator is chile pastor lonye gelam he's a polyvalent nigerian lawyer writer filmmaker and agro consultant his career goal is to impact the African youth with his writings, visuals, empowerment, agro projects, and legal services. Chile consult for Africa, Africa Project Development Center, where the worldview of African youth are reshaped using capacity development in agro pro projects and leadership. He's also the founder of Green Life, Good Life Agro Ventures, a youth-oriented enterprise that promotes the millennium development goals of a sustainable environment and zero poverty as a creative chile utilizes storytelling to address social cultural issues in the society is a prolific writer with several essays and works of fiction in his belt he's the author of the young adult fiction the nigerian boy available on amazon kindle and okada book platform his internationally acclaimed short film the treasure tackles the scourge of rape and depression amongst young girls. He's also the producer of Udi, 
Amamihi, an online learning platform for the promotion of Igbo language and culture. He's a member of the Young African Leadership Initiative, Yali, Young African Poetry Society, yeah, and the Abuja Literary Society. It's my pleasure to welcome our second and the final facilitator for this 2024 Moot Mock and Debate Boot Camp, Chile Onyejelan Pascal. You're welcome, Barista Chile. Thank you very much. Okay, so good to be here once again, everyone. Uh, quickly, quickly, I'm sure. I'm sure we all have an idea as to the subject matter, which is um, ethics in debates. But I, I would want this to be very conversational. Uh, in, initially, it was going to be uh, much um, like a talk, but I would want it to be very conversational so we can speed up as well. And I would also want to know whether we, everyone here has an idea as to what ethics is all about. So feel free, just two or three persons quickly, within 10, 10 seconds each, you can just go in any particular fashion and say what you think ethics mean and what does it mean to say you should have ethics in debate? What is your understanding of it? Then we know whether we have an idea of what we are doing. So quickly, anyone, randomly, just, it could be Feyo Toluwa, it could be Abraham, it could be Fatima, it could be anyone, Serial. How you conduct yourself, sir? All right. Rules governing acceptable social behavior. Okay, acceptable social behavior. Who's next who wants to, what does ethics mean? You can also like it with, with debate, if not just ethics generally. You can say ethics generally then, then as also as it pertains to a debate. Yes, um, good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Yes, sir. Um, so, um, my name is Jedan. and my understanding of ethics it mean refers to like your moral principles like what you feel is right and wrong so when it comes to a debate now like set like your moral principles or behaviors like how you should conduct yourself like through the process of a debate that's what i understand like as ethics beautiful thank you everyone thanks for the first person too so who's next who wants to go next are we okay hi can i go All sir right. Yeah, yeah, please go. Fine. Okay, good evening, sir. I can say that ethics has to do with like a particular program or a structure. All right. Beautiful. There's some there's some uh, comments. There's some comments. Can we take them or do we have time, Vice Ruth? Okay, you can go you can go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, we acknowledge, I think they all have an idea. These are all very beautiful explanations and, and I'm happy it's all coming out from you guys' thoughts, not just random definitions. So it, you, you are all very correct. But most importantly, you know, when we are checking the meaning of the word, especially a word that has um, a different origin from the, the language that it is now, we have to check the etymology where it is derived. So ethics is, um, is a Greek word for ethos. I know we know what I mean. That's simply character. So I think it also has roots with Latin for morals, that's customs. So you can see that is in line with what you guys have described. So in the layman term, ethics is simply how individuals should interact with one another in a very right way. So what you have to do well. Now, as you're relating it to a debate, we know debate can get very feisty, you know, as much as we are human beings, you know, you're trained to be diplomatic and all, you want to win an argument because you think you have this point in your head and you, you're wondering why is this guy's, you know, cognitive abilities not able to grasp what you're saying. You really want to push it down his throat as if that was how we are all taught in school, as if the teachers were not patient with us, you know. So we, we and you know, debate also has um, a timeline. So you, you want man within these two minutes you have to understand or oh, the judges seem to be confused how can they understand what i'm saying this is purely human you know this is purely human so what ethics is telling us is there should be rules just like how you play football or play any other game there should be rules so as much as you are passionate you want to get your points across you want to win you have to say the right things or you have to do it the right way 
so you don't end up even damaging everything. So the wise, the wise people will say that it is intelligence to also watch your audience and see how they are reacting to what you're giving out. So if you're a verbose person, if you'll be naturally very assertive when you're talking, but you are talking to people who don't have education like you do, it's intelligence on your part to know that you shouldn't be like that to them. So you should come down to their level. So this is all ethics. So it is very important, especially in a competitive debate. So now you know you want to win. And it is human beings who are going to judge you. Remember, human beings are biased. It could be the tone of your voice that could put a judge up. I'm telling you honestly, if it is written, written script and someone is reading, it could even be the language. It could, have been, it could be the distractions in your thought process. Like, what is this person saying? And the, person, the judge has been put off. So maybe if the judge was patient enough to listen or to read through, they could not see where, oh, okay, conclusively, this person is making a point, but the judge may not be that patient. So ethics teaches us to know how to do all of this, you know, marry all of this. So it is not enough to be intelligent. It is not enough to have carried out your research and the world powerful points. It is also important the way you pass it across. So those little details. Now, coming down to the debate competition of this foundation, I'm sure you guys already know the criteria for which debaters are being judged. It is usually organizational clarity, use of arguments, language, and overall presentation. I'm correct, right? Yes, you are. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So these are the four criteria that guide the judges to score you guys. So where does ethics come into this? Remember what we said, those little details you have to get right to make all those sweet points of yours that you've researched to come alive. You know, so you have to be, if it is spoken debate, I'm sure we all know this. You have to be very respectful. Now, respectful doesn't necessarily mean timidity. No one says, oh, you should now be timid and don't be assertive once in a while or don't know when to, you know, throw in your pitch or to drop the punchline or when you're dropping particular points or keys to buttress your points. No, but you can also, you can even be aggressively respectful, as ironical as it sounds. So, but just be respectful. The languages you use, don't be condescending towards the other party. It's okay to throw a jibe once in a while, but make sure you are witty about it. Mm -hmm. Don't you, maybe the languages such as, um, I don't know what my cultivators are saying, and then you chuckle. It's very derogatory. Yeah, the audience could cheer you up and chuckle as well. But maybe you can coin it in another way and be like, my co debater or my, my counterparts on the other side have um, correctly said, now you're mocking them because the information that is following what you said is wrong. But you've said okay. that they've corrected it. Now, it is not for the judge to know that this guy has a huge sense of irony. And then you see smiles on their faces. And so you've subtly, you know, aggressive, but then... <laughs> nobody's going to slap you for saying that now they're judging themselves did we correctly say that or were we wrong so be respectful avoid personal attacks also listen actively i think the listening part comes with the rebuttal so you listen to when the your counterpart is talking or your adversary as the case may be so you can rebut accordingly you know listen actively don't feel like don't listen emotionally so you miss the point and then you're you're trying to report and you're shooting yourself in the foot. So I'm like, oh, but I didn't say this. So listen actively so you get every nail you're going to use to nail their last coffin. You know, so you, you try to also, it's also important to be more assured in your speeches. Or, so try to be personal when you are talking. I mean, apart from researches that you're giving credits to the persons that have them the works originally try to when you're making statements especially conclusions use the i a lot like make it personal so we know it is you so following the foregoing of whatever you've said now on i then you give your conclusion so use that i so it, it sounds very assured it sounds challenging so even if the judge is struggling 
make sure this guy is not giving us bobo. But but it sounds assuring. I mean, you, you've given him a walk to okay, okay, let's see. You know, so then always provide evidence. It doesn't matter that your opinions are popular. Forget about the crowd cheering. Forget about what is in the public domain. I mean, lies could have been told several times and it sounds true. But be sure that whatever you're using to back up your points, there is an evidence. One is enough. You don't need to go far. Just one is enough. One classical evidence is enough. It doesn't necessarily have to be popular opinion. You know, so this can contribute to a more constructive and you know informative exchange. Then, another trick also, especially during the rebuttal, is ac acknowledge valid points of your opponent, especially when you want to launch a very huge rebuttal. You know, so it, it kind of makes them relax and it kind of also makes the judge know that you've paid attention to what they are. Of course, your opponents haven't said all gibberish, all true. So there were things they said correctly. So you know, I think I agree when they said, I think I also agree, I mean, it's known fact when so, 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 and so said this, but then I cringe when they also, you see how you made them feel good. I was listening to you guys. Yeah, you're correct. You did your research well, but then <laughs> you guys goofed here and I'm going to show you. So it flows, it flows naturally. You know, the judge, the judges nod their head and like, yeah, this guy knows what he's doing. Then, um, um, for non-academic debates, there is an uh, uh, because this last et et etiquette or ethic is seeking common ground. I don't think in academic debate it suffices so much since at the end of the day it is for a winner to emerge. I mean, in your mind, you can seek common ground and you would have learned one or two that you didn't know from the other side. But when you are having, you know, common debates outside academics, when it's not a win or lose debate, like. Generally, it could be in an assembly, it could be in parliament, it could be making a case in an organization. Always find a common ground. So it's okay for B to disagree with you strongly initially, but make sure at the end of that argument and debate, your op the, the opinions of the both of you are not as strong as it started. You must not necessarily shake hands and say, oh yeah, I know, but make sure it is not as strong. So in that way, it shows, I think I see where he's coming from, but I disagree. It's okay to disagree, but make sure you there's a comment. Oh, I understand. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Because this is well, I see where you're coming from, but mm, I disagree. So then don't um for uh, the trick. I don't know if you guys have watched this movie, uh, the debaters, very uh, foundational mm -hmm. movie for debate and all. You remember what the, the 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 lecture the professor would say to them? You don't necessarily argue to win. And he thought it was an irony. Well, you are pushing us beyond our limits to win. You want this school to... But yeah, but don't have it at the back of your mind because it consumes, you know, passion consumes. When you're a beast of your passion, I want to. Wonderful. It's, it's a wonderful drive for you to, you know, excel, but could also become your Achilles heel. So tame, tame your emotions in that way. I want to win. I've researched enough. I think I've got some of my point. I think I know when to launch this, but also have it at the back of my mind that, hey, somehow I'm going to have fun. I'm going to put out to the world that this is what I have. I'm going to convince the world that I'm made of stuff. Yeah, so these are these are better diplomatic um, silver linings for you to hold on to. But then at the back of your mind, you're hoping to win. But the point is, don't just let that be cloud. You know? And then for whatever reason, you the last one, keep your always keep your bias in check. Always keep your bias in check. So it could be the topic you're arguing for or against. She will already have a preconceived notion about it. No, keep it in check. You don't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have to reflect your honest beliefs. Because at this point, you are researching academically to try to prove this point to show that hey, this may not be the popular opinion, but I'm going to present this in such a way that uh, these people would understand that, oh, how come we didn't give this a thought or this one? So keep your bias in check. Then when your your uh, your counterpart on the other side is also trying, you seem like they're making so much points or they're saying things you don't agree in, in reporting, don't let the emotions get it. Just keep the bias in check and attack the points. Attack the points in a very witty manner.
So, in these few points of mine, I hope I've been able to convince and not confuse you. Oh, <laughs> but it's a room you're smiling. I was not so worried about your how you would handle um, the the unfortunate incident that happened before you came in. I know that you would still, you've always been that way, being able to communicate your thoughts well. And I know that I'm not the only one that agrees. Okay, I'm, I'm already seeing the comments. Yes, thank you. Thank you for those. You just, you were just dropping them bombshell. Like, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So questions, if you have any, there was really something that he said that's employing sarcasm. I think he was he was practical. He gave practical examples of of how you can, you know, there was, there is this thing that you said that it's a very very um a very uh, subtle but very is a is a is a very good technique. Yes, your time management was peak. Yes, you really. That's you really managed your time very well. Thank mm. you so much. Thank you so much. So questions, questions. That thing that you said about, you know, yes, I agree with this. But then that but you know, eh, that's that thing takes a very brilliant person to pull that off. I know you are yeah. and I know you did a lot of that. Is is the kind of thing you would do if you <laughs> if you are debating with someone. So you you're just going to be careful about the point you are agreeing with, so not so that you don't dash your opponent so much points, and then as in make your the, the the person is getting comfortable, you now pull in the net. For a good match. As in the person will be looking for his feet, you know. Mm. That by the time you're done with this is in um, whatever the person presented and probably that's like the person's strong point you know in every debate there's something that it's your opponent that is a major point that the judges actually lose there are there are exactly. there are points that top the charts amongst all other things so that's the one that you're targeting at making a means means a, a means means of yeah thank you for pointing that out i just hope someone smart took note of that and plans to engage it brilliantly in the upcoming competition <laughs> or any other one beyond her GIU. So any yeah. question? Any question? Or feedback? Yeah, I've seen their feedback. Fatima, Cyril, okay. okay. Joshua, no. Jedediah, A.E., John, all of them, Fodua, I can see there. So I think they, yeah. Okay. Maybe, yeah. I think, uh, so if that is, if you guys really understood everything, like I've said, then let's get to work. You know, let it reflect in what you're doing next time. So. And trust me, if I personally see any of this um, uh, this knowledge in the f in your future work, I'm going to really be biased towards that person or the person. <laughs> <laughs> but as a roof knows me, I'm I'm very easy to be impressed. I'm not like the hey, nobody has gotten an A in my this. Nah, nah, nah. He's a very Just... generous judge. <laughs> yeah. Once you impress him, anyway. Let me just give you a little tip about him in advance. <laughs> but he, you yeah. have to impress him. But once you do, he would give it to you. I have different yeah. types of judges. I have in every of my panel. You see, um, the very the, the the ones that want to impress them, they, will, they can they can give you 20 over 20 in that particular criteria. And one of such is Paris actually. <laughs> you see those that um <laughs> when you impress them well, they will give you, but not everything. They'll just give you maybe uh, you, you did very, very well. They'll just give you 15. And then the all three balance up every panel. And then you now have the one that you could get 
Okay, the, the, the ones that you that, that may not readily give will give you maybe like 17. Then you now see those that will give 14. So it balances up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Ruth, I, um, I think Joshua has a, a new job for me. He said I should be a lecturer. Yeah. All right. What is my appointment letter coming in, Joshua? <laughs> All right, thank you. Thanks for the nice words. Uh, All right. So, so, any further feedback before we cut, we we'll draw the curtain. This bootcamp. Okay, he say very soon. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, any further feedback before we? So, few reminders. I would get Barisatile's slide, and as soon as I do, it will be sent to your email. Okay, that's one. Also, Barista Obed, as soon as I get it, trust me, you would get the slide once I do. Then, secondly, your feedback. So, the email that will be sent to you now will contain a feedback form. Please, we need it so that we can we can know the extent of this is the first time we are having a moot mock and debate boot camp so we want to know was it worth it is it something that should be continued um to what extent did the people did um, the people that we organized it for gain from it um that's you know Feedback is very, very important in communication. It's, it's, it's the whole essence of communication. Then the, the third thing I would want to point out. Okay, and then apart, okay, the recording request. Yes, like I said, is something that I already noted and it's something we are working towards. And if it pans out the way we are planning it to, you would have the recording on our YouTube channel. Okay. So that's that. I, and then, like I said, the for your elimination round, for those that submitted entry to the elimination round, it's presently being evaluated by the judges. And like I said earlier, in all the competitions, no head GIUF personnel evaluates any round. So, because we want to be as unbiased as possible. So, like now that I'm seeing some faces, some people that have contributed, I'm already, there, there are times where as, as um, an organizer, just like um, Mrs. Joy talked about, as an organizer of Leap Africa's competition, as it seems, there are certain teams that really impress you and you already have it for right to see why we are not part of the judges. So there are certain students that over time, I'm, 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 I'm also someone that I'm impressed easily. Yeah. So there are people that make an impression of me. So seeing them in the competition, if I'm to be a judge, it may not be so good for other persons that I'm still getting to know. So the elimination round entries are currently being evaluated and mid-match you should know the quarter finalists and before the day before 21st and 22nd of march the quarter finalists you have a whatsapp group and other information will be communicated to you so i can see some networking going on here that's fine that's fine that's fine so you can keep that up. And then like, I, I also encourage, you can have video feedbacks. You can do a one minute video, a shout out to um, a facilitator or facilitators or um, that's appreciating something, something profound you, you, you learn from any of the sessions. It is going to be very, very much appreciated. So thank you once again to our wonderful facilitator. Thank you, Chile, for sparing your time to be a part of this session. I, I don't take you for granted. Thank you so much. Chile has been a friend that I, I, I call on. He has really been a good partner with the foundation in 
our programs and i don't take it for granted i appreciate you so much kudos i appreciate you thank you for your time today thank you, thank you so much thank you all right we'll draw the curtain to the 2024 moot mock and debate boot camp so see you all in subsequent competition someone asked when is the moot Cut competition. So the most cut competition should be around July. Just like last year. I think last year's one was around July, August. So this year we'll probably take that. All right. Thank you once again. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you, Barista Chile. Thank you. Thank you, Barista Ruth, for all the nice works you're doing. God bless you. Keep it up. Thank you, the rest of the facilitators and participants. Good luck. All right. Thank you so much. God bless you too. Have a wonderful evening and a weekend ahead. Bye. Bye.